Hola, welcome to this week's video where we're exploring the complex dynamic between empaths and narcissists. Let's look at the characteristics of an empath first. I'm gonna do it briefly because there's tons of stuff about what an empath is. So empaths are highly sensitive individuals who easily absorb other people's emotions. They're often compassionate, well not often, they are compassionate, nurturing and very often put others and other people's needs before their own. Empaths have a deep capacity for obviously empathy but also attunement which allows them to understand and feel the emotions of others quite profoundly sometimes to the point of being overwhelmed by it. So I mean there are different versions of empathy when you look through the psychological texts but basically empaths often have a heightened sensitivity in their nervous systems making them more attuned to the emotional states of others and this can be both a gift and a bit of a challenge or a curse as it enables them to offer genuine support but it also leads to emotional exhaustion. Empaths tend to be deeply intuitive and can sense the emotions and energies of those around them which adds to this like heightened sensitivity uh, but also allows them to offer comfort and support to others but like I said it can also lead to emotional exhaustion and burnout if uh, they neglect their own needs which empaths often do. As to where it comes from, I mean, yeah, jury's all over the place on that one. Does it come from a traumatized childhood? Is it people pleasing stuff? Um, does it come from being highly anxious and therefore becoming attuned to the environment? And then somehow as an adult, when you're safer, you have this attunement into other people's feelings because you had to pick up on the signals that were being given, the danger signals that were being given in early childhood. I think there's a lot of weight in that. Does it take anything away from someone, some, from someone who is highly empathic and easily able to attune and in quite intuitive towards other people's feelings? No, I don't think it does. And then there is, of course, actually, if you have also had, you know, like a great early experience where em empathy was developed, in the whole dyadic dance thing, your parents were emotionally attuned to you, you're going to have a high level of empathy as well but more likely to have a higher level as well of uh, self-care within that empathic kind of ability um, because you came from that more secure environment where you were also, your needs were also important. The narcissist empath attraction. So if you wanna know what a narcissist is, check out a whole heap of videos on YouTube or down my channel as well but narcissists uh, in short are drawn to empaths because of their caring nature which fulfills the narcissist need for admiration and attention empaths on the other hand will be drawn or may be drawn to narcissists charisma and their confidence hoping uh, that they can maybe heal them they'll be able to spot some of the insecurities there and this dy dynamic can create quite a toxic cycle where the empath uh, gives endlessly and the narcissist takes without reciprocation so how do we how do we look at this attraction what's going on well we could look at it with some psychological models um, if you're into that the first one would be attachment theory which i've kind of already mentioned and touched on empaths having um, in general anxious attachment styles so therefore seeking validation and fearing abandonment then you have narcissists with their avoidant attachment styles who provide the initial validation but later pull it away triggering the empath's fears and then keeping them hooked if you like so this fear comes forward and this this kind of the natural nature of the empath moving towards i'm going to fix this i'm going to fix this i'm going to fix this and the further they pull away the further the narcissist pulls away the more i'm going to fix this i'm going to fix this i'm going to fix this because this is my role if it's this kind of early anxious like i was talking about this early anxious attachment process if it was a more secure attachment um, and your emotional needs were met, you are less likely to fall for this dynamic. You will realize this is a lot of hard work, too much hard work, I'm gonna walk away from this. Uh, another thing that can be created uh, is codependency. So a lot of empaths uh, may well have the codependent tendencies where they derive their self-worth from helping others. This is again, is this anxious kind of needing to be valued in a certain way. I gain my value, I gain my worth from helping others. And again, this could, it, it can spiral into this. 
And narcissists will exploit this by creating situations where the empath feels needed and important because that's what keeps you spin there on the spot and spinning around on the wheel and trying harder. Empaths can also project their own qualities onto the narcissist, believing <clears throat> that deep down the narcissist is capable of empathy and change. Uh, of course they're not because uh, the lack of empathy is one of the narcissistic traits, but the illusion, the love bombing, uh, that's, that was at the beginning, will get the empath hooked. Okay, so if you're an empath, if you consider yourself an empath, if you're highly empathic, that's the bit that's going to get you hooked because you're going to feel mirrored because that's another technique that narcissists uh, narcissist use, especially abusers. They will mirror you. They will mirror what you want. They will mirror what you desire. You're also mirroring for them. They'll throw out that love bombing to get it back, but they'll also throw out that empathy to get it back, and it draws you really, really, really draws you in. Um, and so this illusion keeps the empath invested in the relationship, which presents some challenges in the empath narcissistic relationship. So the challenges that occur or the dynamics that occur would be things such as emotional manipulation, the lack of em empathy from the narcissist, overgiving from the empath, empath trying to fix from the empath. The, and this imbalance often leads to the empath feeling drained, unappreciated, it impacts their mental health, it will impact their physical health and their self-esteem, just as it would anybody else being involved with a narcissist, empath or not. So for example, the narcissist may use tactics like gaslighting, again, I'll put a video up, to manipulate the empath, causing them to doubt their own perceptions of uh, reality and their own feelings, bringing more confusion, and over time the empath may become more emotionally exhausted and struggle with the feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. And empaths in these relationships will often experience significant stress and anxiety, just as actually many people in these relationships will as they constantly try to meet the narcissist's demands and needs whilst neglecting their own needs. Uh, unless, of course, they had that secure kind of attachment and relationship with empathy, in which case they would have walked away a long time ago. This will and can lead to burnout, emotional exhaustion, making it difficult for the empath to maintain their sense of self and well-being. How do you break the cycle? Well, empaths can protect themselves by setting clear boundaries for themselves and for other people. Uh, or the, the boundaries in, in, in effect create a boundary for other people. Practice self-care. Um, practice seeking support from trusted friends or therapists. It's really, really crucial for empaths to prioritize their well-being and recognize that they cannot fix a narcissist. You cannot fix a narcissist, it's impossible. You would have to go back to their childhood and change their childhood and change how they perceived and processed and managed and worked through and coped with that childhood. You can't do that, it's too far gone. So here are some strategies for breaking the cycle, which include setting, like I said, the setting of boundaries, clearly communicate your limits, not just with them, but with yourself and enforce them con consistently. For instance, if you choose to, uh, you know, one of your boundaries is not to tolerate uh, disrespectful behavior or name calling or something, and you insist on this kind of mutual respect, you have to hold that boundary, you have to keep it there. I mean, it would be easier to walk away, and it's often the best thing to do with a narcissist, but with anybody, if you're, a, if you're an empath, you can be drained by other people. So it's like allowing yourself, uh, you know, here, here's the boundary of what I expect to be treated like and how I will also in turn treat people. And along with that, not just with narcissists, but empaths need to be careful about self-care. Engage in activities that nurture your well-being. Switch it off. Don't try and help everybody. Use meditation. Use exercise. Use hobbies. Make time for yourself. Decide what you would like to do with this time. And prioritize your emotional health because you are no good to anybody if you are burnt out. Okay, you can't help anybody then. And you move, I think, from being an empath to just being a complete people pleaser, which is not an empath. Maybe that was a slightly controversial statement, but I think it's true. You can, you, if, you, if you have empathy, have empathy for yourself as well. So like I said, yeah, sport, exercise, meditation, yoga, journaling, art, all of these things, things you like doing, whatever they may be, 
make sure you make time for them. Make sure you have that downtime, that self-care time. It's really, really important to maintain emotional health for anybody. If you do find yourself as an empath caught up in a, either a narcissistic relationship, I know that's what this video is about, or um, within any other or several relationships which are draining, reach out to friends, reach out to family, uh, or a therapist for some guidance and some validation, discuss your experiences and your feelings uh, with these trusted individuals who can give you that second pair of eyes and that support and go, hey, you know what, I don't think you're really looking after yourself here, or hey, you know what, I think you're being abused here. This doesn't look very good, it doesn't sound very good, it looks like you're being manipulated. Uh, it looks like you've, uh, uh, maybe you've allowed that, you know, if you're a really good friend, they might go, hey, you're getting manipulated again. You're doing it again, you're repeating the pattern, you know. So you'll find something. So don't be afraid to seek that out. Don't be afraid to do that kind of uh, checking out on reality, getting a, a second opinion or a third or a fourth, whatever may help you if you're feeling drained and feeling you are being drained or worse still, abused and manipulated. And lastly, I'd say a good thing to do is to educate yourself if you actually really do think you're an empath and you may well have an anxious attachment or you may well have been involved in some negative relationships which led you to burnout, depression, things like that. You know, do some reading up on it. Find some, find some uh, uh, valid sources where you can read about empaths, really look at some of the psychological texts and research out there such as attachment theory um, and things like that where you can gain this kind of like, oh, well, oh, that fits for me. That fits for me too. Oh, that's why I do that. That's where I'm going wrong here. That's because... You know, it's all very well blaming the narcissist. Uh, and, and like I said, I've done on another video of this, but you know, actually the hardest thing to do, but one of the most empowering things to do is to take stock of yourself and look at yourself and what you've allowed. Did I not put any boundaries in? Why didn't I put any boundaries in? Okay, move forward from that. What are the boundaries I'd like to put in? What have I learned from this experience? What am I learning about myself? I'm learning I give too much of myself, too quick, too soon, too helpful, too much this, too much to everybody. You know, I'm like butter spread too thin over toast, you know, and I can't even manage my own life. So educate yourself, gain some awareness around yourself to be able to understand where you're kind of like uh, more vulnerable, if you like, to being manipulated. And, and sometimes the manipulation doesn't have to be bad. Just sometimes when people will see that you're really, really helpful, really, really nice, and really, really empathic. And they'll just lean on you and lean on you and lean on you and lean on you. And before you know it, you're like, oh, I'm just drained from it. So, you know, gain some self-protection, gain some education, practice the self-care for sure. And uh, yeah, just monitor your, your own emotional well-being and your own psychological health. As always, I hope that helps. And until I see you again, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.